All right, today's show jam packed. We got preseason week three thoughts. We got our values on this show today. We're talking Cam Newton, the injury, Darius Geis. You don't want to miss today's show. Stay tuned. Hey, Foot Clan, the time is now, not yesterday, not tomorrow, right now. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. Prepare yourself for this weekend's draft. You don't want to get caught with your pants down. That's, That's embarrassing. And you've got everything you could possibly need. Every bit of research, analysis, blurbs, videos, projections. The list goes on. And guess what? You know what I did this morning? I, we got a draft on Sunday. I set my app up. I took every keeper out of the list. I've got it primed. I've got it ready. I got my favorites marked up. It's time. It is time. And you've got access to the mobile app as well. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. And hey, Foot Clan, today's episode is brought to you by 20th Century Fox's new film, Ad Astra. Brad Pitt stars as Roy McBride, an astronaut who travels to the outer edges of the solar system to find his missing father and unravel a mystery that threatens the survival of our planet. It looks awesome. The answers we seek are just outside our reach. Ad Astra in theaters September 20th. Uh, This is D.D. Westbrook here with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome in to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Andy, Mike, and Jason. Back once more, had some preseason week three games take place last night. We got values on the show today. I'm excited. I I drove in today, a little Hootie and the Blowfish on the radio, and then followed up by Naughty by Nature. Wow. That combination gets you going. Mike, you said that. Well, one of those gets you going. (laughs) One of those, not a Hootie fan. One of those gets me going out the room. You don't like Hootie? You like Hootie? Of course. Can we pull the room? Seriously, Hootie and the Blowfish? Give me a yeah, break. I'm, we got, we got thumbs I'm, up. We got thumbs down. We got three down, one up. You just want to be Mike's friend. Everybody who's thumbs down, oh, Mike's cool. I no. Cool people don't like Hootie. No. I, it's a 90s channel, man. It brings you back. Oh, yeah, it brings me back to the time where I was like, ah, crap, Hootie and the Blowfish are on the radio oh, again. Oh, stop it. And then you turn, trying to find the new station. Okay. Well, we, we can digress. We can, we can focus just on Naughty say, by Nature. You That's were just awesome. saying the other day, you've, you've gotten to the point in your life, Mike, yes. at 36 years old, where you are not, uh, you're not willing to accept new music. Look, I've, I've hit the age. I'm too old. I can I can respect what's happening with the new popular music. I can somewhat enjoy it, but it just nothing sticks anymore. I'm all full up of yeah. favorites. Well, apparently Hootie's not a part of it. Oh so, no! Um, we've got a great show. Some news, some notes. Hootie. Talk about some injuries. No, give me a break. Give me a break. I'm not accepting the hate on '90s Hootie and the Blowfish. Don't worry, your timeline will will get. I it know to you. that's fine. <laughs> Jason's not even contributing. I don't need to stack on. <laughs> this is like he's dead already. I'm just bowing out. Now, wait, was I it hold no, my hand? Which one it was, was it? Hold my hand. Oh, yeah. Nice. How'd that go? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <remember. laughs> yes. <clears throat> Whatever. Whatever. I can be alone. I got one person in the in our uh, viewing audience that will hold my hand on that. Here's the quick question of the day. Draft day, biggest one of the year tomorrow. Um, Brooks wants to know what our ultimate draft day foods are in order of importance. Mm. We do get this question a lot. Mike, you have historically uh, provided a sausage dip recipe for draft day. Although last year, I don't believe you brought it. No, I did not. So thanks for that. Was, Was very, very behind. But it's actually easy. Foot Clan, if you want to look like a culinary genius, bring this sausage dip. It's so easy. One serving is take a half pound of sweet Italian sausage. You brown it up. Then you throw that in a slow cooker. You throw that in there with one can of Rotel. I use the mild. And then a brick of Philly cream cheese. 
That's all you need. And people will be begging you for the recipe, saying you are a chef master. It's delicious. All right, Jason. Look, for me, you know, it's all about the food you can eat with your hands, no utensils, get after it, and it's about desserts. So I want I want pick up food that I can go, okay, I'm just making my pick. I'm on cloud nine because it was so good. And then I go over Super to the, delicious. Uh, I go over to the table. I grab some Oreos. If you can get churros, find them, get them in. Hostess apple pies. Sure, if you can get churros? Any kind of Look, I love churros, but has everyone anyone ever showed up to a draft with churros? <laughs> Look, if you're drafting in or around Anaheim, maybe Orlando, <laughs> make a quick stop at Mickey Mouse his house and say i'd like 20 churros please cut them up now that's a culinary practicality genius. has no bearing on his decisions for it's, draft day foods it's simply things he likes a lot and wants to have show up for him right donuts uh it's pizza for me you gotta have pizza there um throughout the draft follow the show on twitter at the ff ballers let us know your favorite draft day food today we're gonna get into some of these preseason storylines we've got our favorite value picks for fantasy football drafts coming up, uh, some names that we each want to kind of bring to light, discuss, see if uh, we can ruin the fact that they're a value. No, no. We're good, man. We're, we're close enough to the draft weekend. Yeah, that's true. And uh, you can check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, the biggest headline from, from last night was Cam Newton's injury. Cam Newton, uh, concern, goes out of the game, declared out right away. Uh, Panthers GM came out this morning, says Cam Newton has a mid-foot sprain in his left foot. They are cautiously optimistic that he'll be ready for week one. Yeah, I, I, right, right now he's doing the boot scoot. Oh, oh that's not the same as uh, Cam Newton. Nope. It's not the same. Uh, yeah, he I mean, was, In the game, he was scooting that booty all over the place. So getting there, chased all over. There is, you know, there's there's a little bit of reason for optimism if you look at the combination. So Pro Football Doc, uh, he, he tweeted out that he thought it would be a mild sprain based on video. Turns out that was confirmed. He says he's not worried at all about the timeline of that. But whenever you hear a GM well, he said say, we hope he's ready for week one, that's like, mm, I don't. Cautiously optimistic. Everything change. If Cam Newton's not on the field week one, you can uh, run in fear of DJ Moore, Curtis, Curtis Samuel. Samuel. Yeah. At Christian least for McCa week one. Christian McCaffrey would be absolutely fine. I've seen a lot of people say, based on that news, do you move Christian McCaffrey down the board? No, you, you saw games without Christian McCaffrey last or without Cam Newton last year, and Christian McCaffrey was just – beyond hyper-targeted. Yeah, and we're talking about maybe he misses a game here. This is not a long-term injury for Cam Newton. Probably going to be back. He tends to respond well from injury and get back quicker than we think, unless he needs surgery. In that yeah. case, not so much. <laughs> like when he was in that massive truck accident, yeah. and it was like, oh my gosh. The car he's been flipped. in a major car accident. Is he fine? He's like, Well, what was underreported is the car actually ran into him and then, like a superhero, the car's all bent up, and then not, they didn't want to blow his cover, so they just said he was in the car wreck. Right. Jordan Reed forced from Thursday's preseason uh, game with a concussion. With possible concussion, which would it, be number seven for Jordan Reed's yes. career. And for his seven concussion, too many for a human being. For his concussion history, this is extremely worrisome. And if you saw the hit, it it was rough. I'm not going to go as far to call it a dirty hit. But he was being tackled, and then a secondary defender came flying in, head down, arms not up. The, this defender was not trying to go for a tackle, and it was one of those nasty head-to-head -head collisions. Knocked Reed's helmet off, so hopefully he is okay. But because of his concussion history, this isn't the regular, okay, a guy got his first concussion, or at least on record. He should be back in a week or two. Reed we have no idea now. We have no idea when he'll actually be out of the concussion protocol. It, off off your draft board? Yeah, probably. I mean, there's... Because where you were drafting him, you could make a decision to go with Tyler Eifert 
or maybe or Delaney Walker, Walker yeah, or like, Mark Andrews or it, Trey Burton. And our sleeper bowl team, uh, the the league where we're playing against Juju, we already made the pivot. We had Reed, we dropped him, and we put we picked up Delaney Walker. Uh, Damian Harris last night handled two carries, left with an injury. Um, I was already kind of worried that Harris wouldn't be active on game day this year. I think the most interesting thing from that game was the you know Burkhead's heavy usage in the rotation with Michelle, who had a great game, and then James White. I don't know if they activate four guys on game day. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see how it pans out. Obviously, if he's injured, he's not going to be activated. It wasn't. He says wasn't he's a fine. He says he's fine. That's the report. Sony just looked amazing yep. in that game. Rex Burkhead was was in, but he did not look good. And then Damian Harris did not get to capitalize on any opportunity, but he was not given a snap with Tom Brady even before the injury. Uh, there was a report this morning. If we want to continue on yesterday's hype train. Darwin Thompson, reported by two sources to have leaped Carlos Hyde on the depth chart and also been receiving goal line work with the first team offense. Anything that this changes from the viewpoint yesterday? I mean, I know that uh, we brought him up as a sleeper on the show. Carlos Hyde, you think he's going to be cut? Uh, at, at this point, it's it's hard to see it not happening. I mean, our our best look to, to what's happening inside is is these beat reporters and beat reporters for several weeks. It's been the drum beat has been building. Carlos Hyde is not going to make this team, and he's they've they've said he's had an okay camp in preseason. He's been kind of meh. Had that had that pretty bad fumble, and they're also saying it's not just a combination of if Carlos Hyde has been so terrible that they're going to get rid of him. It's he's been mediocre. And Darwin Thompson has exceeded their expectations, so they he's he becomes expendable, and they would just move forward with with Damian Darwin and Daryl, the three Ds. Yes, yeah, very important to uh, keep that alliteration in your backfield. It does make it stronger. It's like those when you, in a video game, you know, when you have the right team, yeah, you get a plus three percent to vitality. Is that how Captain Planet was made with the right? combination of well it, that's true alliteration yeah. it wasn't alliteration. no it was not no. it was okay. earth wind fire water heart <laughs> the poor heart it, kid was heart the uh darius rucker of the group <laughs> the the hootie it was the and 90s then, hooties look, man was heart talking to animals that would be sensational that would be my hand. an incredible power to talk to be dr doolittle talk to animals is that what heart could do yes okay so if you but but your friend over here's got a ring. He controls the ocean. He controls fire. You you'd feel pretty ripped off. That's fair. So by comparison, yes, which is the Carlos Hyde problem. Because yes, by comparison exactly. to Darwin, it came full circle there, Mike. <laughs> Darius Geis on the field for uh, quite a while last night, involved in the running game, the passing game. A lot of snaps. No Adrian Peterson. Didn't play last night. Chris Thompson did play. Thoughts on Geis? I thought he looked stiff. Uh, I thought that you probably couldn't have expected more from what you got from him last night. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a world where Darius Geis is better for fantasy than I think he could be. I, I don't think I got there last night. But what was uh, – Jason, Mike, what were your reactions to, uh, to Darius Geis? It was nice to see him out on the field. It looks like he's healthy enough, obviously, to play football. You never – <clears throat> saw him do a hard cut, a hard hard plant with his left leg. He he sort of did. Sure, okay, and 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 that's fair. I mean, he he was fine. You did see some of the holes while he was targeted a few times. You saw he's not the most fluid pass catcher. That was one of the issues, and and I think it's relevant to say okay, they they gave him a lot of work. They wanted to see what they have. But, you know, we've, we've brought up earlier, you know, the best case scenario for the starting running back is to not play at all. And that was Adrian Peterson, who I still fully believe come week one is the starting running back for the Washington Redskins. I would say you can't use that analogy when you're talking about Washington. When, they, when it's a player coming off of this ACL, you have to find out if he's ready to play. And he needs to take snaps. He needs to get out there and get over the mental hurdle, learn – Learn to trust his his knee again. Where sure. 
I mean, well, but who do you, I, who do you as many is, reps as he can get? I exactly. agree completely. But uh, does that mean you do not believe Adrian Peterson is the starting running back come week one? I I I don't know. I think it's I think it's definitely murky. It could it could be Darius Geis. I thought his vision looked looked still where it should be. And on the the one particular run where you were talk or I was talking about where he planted on his left leg, he kind of rolled out. He got to the sideline and he still had a lot of power. I mean, he was able to get a stiff arm in, knock another defender over. So it it's going to take time. He doesn't look like he's mid-season form Darius Geis by any stretch. But if if we're going to get that, and then he's going to improve as he learns to play in the NFL and trust his body once again, it do you think that it's fantasy, possible? Do you think fantasy owners will be at least flexing Darius guys by week eight? Do you believe that that what percentage chance do you believe that that will happen? I would give that a seventy percent chance. And and if that's the case, then you are drafting him. To, if, to, if, to if, he can, if he continues to go in that around that eighth round area, then yeah, I'm I mean, interested. I, I will just throw this out there. So, something else we saw early on, we saw them use him, but we've brought up the fact that let's say he was just fully healthy, right? I mean, Adrian Peterson had over 1,000 yards last year and was great and wasn't really that big of a fantasy impact uh, because the offense isn't that great. The offensive line is in shambles. He had three goal line chances. Like, best case scenario, they get their, you know, first and goal at the one and a half. He did not score a touchdown. He did. Well, it was called back on a penalty, but he scored. But, the, I mean, the, uh, the offensive line penalty problems, the team. I'm just saying the, you know, being the starting running back for the Redskins, I'm not sure that that's a very valuable. Yeah, I, I won't argue with that. He's not going to be in a, a, a top tier running back, but. Look, when you, we all know that once once everything's happening in the middle of the season and there's running back carnage, you you might be very happy that you have a starting running back on your team. Uh, last one, Daniel Jones continues to pulverize second and third team defenses. He does. I think he's about twenty five for thirty in the preseason, somewhere in that range. There's this incredible picture going <laughs> around. Yes. I, I retweeted it of about fifteen. Reporters, beat writers, cameramen, uh, holding microphones, lights, shining on Daniel Jones, interviewing him. And in the background, in the corner, is a, a, a very normal-looking Eli Manning putting his shoes on. Just yes. right behind him in the shadow of this crowd. It's excellent. And the tip of the hat to our great friend, super stat nerd, Scott Barrett. What's up, Scott? How are you doing? Among 80 quarterbacks this preseason, Daniel Jones ranks first in yards per attempt, 12.3. The next closest is 9.8. First in passer rating, 140.1. First in drop adjusted completion percentage, 87%. It's, it's going to be a wild ride. Now, it's, it, the second Eli starts struggling in New York, oh. it's going to be reckless and you know Eli is going to struggle at some point but yes but I think it's you know we we said this uh on our on our live show yesterday and maybe Andy you disagree with me on this point I believe that the better Daniel Jones does a preseason and now that's pretty much over and he was electric and awesome <clears throat> that's bad for some of these weapons because it's more likely that Daniel Jones is going to see the field this year like I I you know I think that there's a really good chance eight or nine weeks in they're going to shift to Daniel Jones. He's clearly the future of the franchise. And while it's good that he is better than a lot of analysts were mocking the Giants for being, he's still a rookie, non-rushing, uh, you know, pocket-passing quarterback. And they don't accumulate enough counting stats to uh, be good for your wide receivers and, and your tight end. Uh, you know, Evan Ingram, we love the start to the season, but is he going to have a slow back half? if they switch to, you know, a, a rookie quarterback. Yeah, I. it's not a team we're sitting here counting on their wide receivers for. And we well, we're just, counting on Ingram. Sure. Who's not a wide receiver, also, also making the same point. Saquon Barkley is affected, but we just talked about Cameron Newton going down. And you brought up the fact that McCaffrey was just as valuable. The tight end is generally a release valve. I don't know if the the danger is as significant unless you're sitting here going, man, I really need 
to bank on Sterling Shepard having 80-yard games or, or Golden Tate. The worst-case scenario for this team was Daniel Jones looked like trash this preseason. Eli looks like trash. Then you hand the reins over to a, a player that doesn't look very good. So who's really affected? Evan Ingram is, the, is my worry. Well, yeah, I, it's possible, but he's the biggest, best target. And a lot of times rookie quarterbacks lean towards the tight end position. I'm just not that worried sure. any, anymore for the expectations I have for those players. Um, is there anybody else, anything else from the uh, pre uh, – Didi. Didi Westbrook. Oh, yeah. Didi. Mike's Didi. timeline was filling up with Didi. Uh, you might actually get the Kiki Didi Juju season. Th that, because it's up to you, Kiki. I mean, Kiki, stay healthy. Yes. Didi, keep doing what you're doing so far. He was a he was like the only guy that Nick Foles went to. I was so upset. So we, you know, Brooks may, makes these show docs way in advance, and I had gone in and put Didi as my value today, and I was so excited to talk about it because he is such a value in the draft. Where he is at ADP, draft him, Foot Clan. I would call him a breakout, though. But you just did him as a breakout, <laughs> so I had to pivot, even though I had him in first. <laughs> Got him. All right. We're going to – um. We're going to move on into the values. Remember, uh, download the Sleeper app, the best, most flexible platform for the modern fantasy football player. Grab the Sleeper app today. We also want to thank today's sponsor. What's the la uh, When's the last time you thought about your tires? The Mike? last time we talked about discount tire. That's right. Tires are what makes the difference in how your car feels and drives. And since 1960, discount tire has been keeping customers safe by taking care of all your tire and wheel needs. They got a thousand locations across 34 states. Their main focus is your safety and the safety of everybody else on the road. Whether you just need an air check or a set of uh, tires or wheels, Discount Tire can help you get back on the road with peace of mind and change to spare. Visit DiscountTire.com to shop, research, and purchase your tires today. You can even make an appointment to skip the lines I like that. That is DiscountTire.com. Discount Tire, they'll get you taken care of. And we want to thank White Castle, Foot Clan. White Castle is America's first fast food hamburger chain as well as the slider experts. Now you can get that same one-of-a-kind taste when you pick up a White Castle sliders from the grocery store made with 100% beef patties on a bed of steam-grilled onions. They, uh, they have the same one-of-a-kind taste. That White Castle has been serving in the restaurant for years. Maybe you're a vegetarian. White Castle sliders, uh, like they, they've got, they've got them for you. They have just cheese as well. Looking to add a little spice to your life? Just to have a taste of our jalapeno cheese sliders. When when my father had heard that we were talking about White Castle on the yeah. show, he he loves to reminisce of of being a young lad growing up, always hitting up the White Castle. Very envious uh, that that he had such access to it growing up, but now we all do because we can hit uh, we can hit the grocery store and pick up our own pack from the castle or the grocery store. You can satisfy your crave anytime with White Castle. Go to whitecastle.com/footballers to get one dollar off the purchase of any four or six pack White Castle sliders. Values. Does it, does it's very it, sneaky. Music. Does it bother you, Jay? I know you consider yourself a slider expert. Yeah, well, of course. And, and then White Castle, they say they're the slider experts. Well, I mean, it's, are you willing to defer in this case? I'm willing to combine okay. in this case. Chef so if there was a podcast on sliders, you would have some representatives from them. Absolutely, you, you would be on there as an analyst. I I welcome people making things for me to eat <laughs> and that's the that's a symbiotic relationship i'm all Wait, about. what do you offer them Symbi <laughs> Symbi symbiotic i am means, the eater yes yeah. you are the maker you, you give them the the what the sat the satisfaction well, of i give them the money so it, oh, it, it, it right. does work out all right we're talking about values i'll kick it off right now my favorite value is lamar jackson quarterback for the baltimore ravens my shameless Bold predictions article for Baltimore. I said Lamar Jackson will lead the Baltimore Ravens to the division title, end up one of the best quarterback steals in fantasy football. I just think there is so much upside, tremendous value drafting Lamar Jackson, even in the 10th round, because of what he gives you from a high floor perspective with the rushing yardage, 
he's he he kind of offers you no downside on a week to week basis. Maybe he doesn't have the blow up game. Maybe he doesn't progress as a passer, but he's going to rush the football more than probably any quarterback in the history of the NFL this year. Uh, the record, by the way, 1,039 yards by Mike Vick in 2006. Uh, his 16-game pace last year would have been 1,588 yards. <laughs> Okie dokie. He uh, had the most rush attempts ever for a quarterback in limited work. People don't realize how good Lamar Jackson was as a rookie. He was in a situation where he came in halfway through the year. He's doing everything he can do as a 20-year-old to come in and win games, which he did. He won football games for he them. He did. Six and one, I believe, as a starter. And when you actually – there's a lot of negative vibes about him as a passer because of the 58% completion percentage, which I don't care about in fantasy football. Not to the degree that I do if I was a uh, uh, NFL football coach saying, hey, that number needs to improve compared to the rest of the league. Sure. But – when you look at what he actually did, and this is via Warren Sharp, Lamar Jackson posted a higher yards per attempt, a better passer rating in his rookie season than these quarterbacks. Andrew Luck, Jared Goff, Sam Bradford, Carson Palmer, Peyton Manning, Carson Wentz, Sam Darnold. The list goes on. He didn't have that bad of a year as a passer. And now you get a system that is built entirely around his strengths, his weaknesses, They'll be running that option set. They'll get him in play action. They'll get him out of the pocket. They'll get him into one read, two read situations with Mark Andrews creating mismatches down the field. And then you get the rushing yardage on top of it. I think it's a good football team. I think you have some upside in the growth of these rookies, Miles Boykin, Marquise Brown. And uh, to me, it's a story of what ifs. You're drafting him in the 10th round, and the story with Lamar Jackson is what if he's a better passer and he's more consistent throwing the football? What if his ball security improves, which it almost has it to? It better. 14 fumbles or whatever it was last year. What if he doesn't fumble as much? What if the interceptions go down? Which, of course, they're claiming ball security has been fixed, right? Yeah, of course. You can't necessarily uh, believe them. But Greg Roman, one of the greatest offensive minds with rushing quarterbacks, Colin Kaepernick. Yep. Um, Tyrod. Tyrod Taylor. He he plays to the quarterback's strengths, and I don't see very much downside to drafting Lamar Jackson in the 10th or 11th round and finding out whether you have a starter for 16 games because you might. And that's the essence of late-round quarterback. You don't necessarily want to be streaming them. You want to spend draft picks on value and then see if you've got that auto start. <laughs> My favorite what-if with Lamar Jackson you didn't even bring up, which is – what if he keeps running the ball at the pace he did? I mean, he broke the NFL record for rushing attempts at a quarterback, and he played half the season. And the thing is, is it's not like, it's not like, oh, you know, how could this ever happen? In college, he was, I mean, Saquon Barkley is a, a generational talent. It's just unbelievable. The best running back in the country. Lamar Jackson had more rushing yards than rushing yards than Saquon Barkley <laughs> twice. Two to, his last two years, Lamar Jackson in college, I mean, that's unbelievable. So what he can do on the ground is electric. He I had, love. He had 1,571 rushing yards in 2016, and then he said, no, I'll go for 1,601 <laughs> yards in his senior season. It's absurd. So, uh, And they design runs for him. This is not the scramble drill of Josh Allen and company. This is a designed rushing offense, putting him in the position to move – uh, the football down the field with his legs. So I like the value on Lamar. I'm all in. Uh, what do you got for a value, uh, Mike? Well, I just, I just wanted to make a quick comment Go too, for, it. for Lamar Jackson. I like it. He, he's ranked, if you look at my six-point rankings, he's actually pretty low, 19 right now. But that speaks to the depth of quarterback because I am more than happy in a single quarterback league. If I, if I leave the draft with Lamar Jackson, fantastic. But you look at the splits when you move over to the standard or the four-point touchdown league because of the rushing yards, because the touchdown, the passing touchdown value from the other quarterbacks comes down, Lamar Jackson jumps up to my number six quarterback. It's crazy, but that's what happens, uh, especially in his unique situation where he's going to run the ball that many times. It's, it's, it's wild 
the way that he plays quarterback. So if you if you look at, I mean, just remember back to Tebow, right? Yes. I don't think you can criticize whatever parts of his his consistency throwing the football. His quarterbacking. His quarterbacking. <laughs> You're not going to get on the level of what was criticized of Tim Tebow's quarterbacking, who was very relevant for fantasy yes. football. Yes, he was. So. You're up, Mike. All right. I want to bring up the name Marvin Jones, wide receiver for the Detroit Lions, currently going in about the middle of the eighth round. These are what the things I want to point out for Marvin Jones. Nothing was drastically different in usage for Marvin Jones last year. Last year, he and I'm talking to two years ago when he was a wide receiver one. But you're I, I just being clear. You're saying his usage, not his fantasy production, which that was is, significantly yes. impacted. Yes. I'm talking usage versus production. But usage-wise, last year, averaging, but in his nine games, he was averaging 100 air yards per game. Two years ago, he was averaging 100 air yards per game. Last year, seven targets a game. Two years ago, seven targets a game. The yards per recep reception went down because, of course, it did. Since the year 2000, what he had two years ago, 18 yards per reception, that ranks 15th for wide receivers with more than 100 targets. Like He balled out. He went. He hit the title lock at efficiency and went bananas for fantasy football. So I'm not expecting 18 yards per reception for Marvin Jones, but I'm certainly expecting more than 14 and a half, what he put up last year. His first year in Detroit, 16.9 yards per reception. So he is definitely somewhere in the middle making him an extreme value to me in the eighth round because everyone is hot and bothered by the smooth routes. They're smooth. They are oh so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> is this, is, are those the smooth routes? Apparently the word uh, King Goffrey looks very similar to so, Kenny G. And I'm talking about Kenny G, Kenny Galladay. Oh. Perceived. So smooth. Perceived number one wide receiver. For the Detroit Lions last year, or he's going in the in the fourth round. Last year, it was a good season for Kenny Galladay. He broke out, had over a thousand yards. He put up 172 fantasy points. Marvin Jones in his nine games, his pace, he would have ended up with 175 fantasy points because Marvin Jones is a touchdown machine. Those touchdowns are not going away for Marvin Jones. If he hits on a couple more of those 50-50 balls like he did two years ago, he can easily easily outproduce Kenny Galladay and jump right back into the wide receiver two uh, conversation. And he's going in the eighth round, four rounds behind Kenny Galladay. So he is uh, just an extreme value to me. Jason. All right. I, the, the eighth versus fourth thing, I don't even know. I think people have turned the volume down on the smooth routes. But even even still. But they, he's still going in that fourth exactly, round. Yeah. Because yeah. Well, when you're there, you see the shiny name of Kenny Galladay Breakout last year, thousand yard receiver, and you just you start getting the tingles in your tummy. Yeah, and you want to get them, and yeah. don't. If you want part of the Detroit passing game, those are good tingles, right? Well, the usually ones, the ones you're talking about. Usually, because there are bad tingles too. Those can happen. <laughs> I, well, speaking from experience. All right, I'm going to bring <laughs> up. Uh, you know, you were you were hitting a drop for a king. I'm going to talk about the lizard king as. <laughs> The, the Lizard King, Sammy Watkins himself. Are you gonna mean Jim Morrison, Jason? I was gonna, I was gonna bring that up the other day. I don't even know if Jason knows what no, reference course. he's making. Wait, are you telling me that Jim Morrison is known as the Lizard King? Yes. Well, does he have I'll a? Be. Does he have a song called the Lizard King? It's the Doors, man. Uh, some references to some weird stuff. I'm yes. just searching for drops here. I mean, if <laughs> well, you could say people are strange. When you're a stranger. I'm just proud that I knew that. Yes, Anyways, I'm pretty proud, I'm too. impressed. Moving on. You guys ever heard of Hootie and the Blowfish? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Sammy Watkins, nobody wants, right? Sammy, Agreed. Sammy That's, Watkins. It's fair. And they, he's burned too many people in the past. This offseason. He's an arsonist. When, Fantasy uh, arsonist. Oh, I like it. <laughs> I like that, Mike. It, this this offseason, when it looked like Tyree Kill's NFL career was over. Sammy Watkins was someone that I, you know, he was rising up the draft boards, even though people were a little bit afraid. I was arguing for him to be a top 15 wide receiver. And then the situation changed. Tyreek Hill came back and Sammy Watkins has 
plummeted. He's plummeted to where you can get him oftentimes in your draft in the 10th round. His average Too soon. draft position. Oh, my goodness. The, the, his average draft position right now is the back of the ninth. He is the wide receiver 42 off the board. He is the number two wide receiver for Pat Mahomes. I mean, th that alone should say wide receiver 42 is too low, but let's just look at what he actually already did with Pat Mahomes. Because last year he had eight games that he played healthy in, or at least healthy enough to where he was on the field and wasn't, you know, in there for two snaps and gone. And in those eight games, he he was very fantasy relevant. Six out of his eight games that he played, he was a wide receiver three or better, all the way up to being the wide receiver number three on a certain week. And and you've got a guy who was on pace for uh, over a thousand yards and six touchdowns. He is one of their better red zone options. All three of his touchdowns came in the red zone with Pat Mahomes. He was a guy that was already in the games he played, tracking as basically the wide receiver 20. And now you've got him at wide receiver 42. The upside is there. I mean, the touchdown volume is there. His target count was just barely behind Tyreek Hills. Now, he's not as freakish as... Tyree Kill. Tyree Kill was the number one wide receiver in fantasy last year. But the number two on a team that we all agree is one of the either the best offense in the league or the second best offense in the league. I, I get it. I get the logic behind that argument. And he's you know, he's the number two, but obviously Kelsey Hill sure. take the cake on targets. I I'm looking at Sammy Watkins situation. Like I don't I don't need to get into the injury concerns or um, you know, reliability factor to make a case against him. I think it's a team. I have a team context case against him. Okay. Which is we, we look at the M Michael Hardman draft pick and we look at Tyree kill and we say, Oh, they're hedging against that. I don't believe that. I believe they're hedging against what they need to do with this, with this uh, receiving core financially, Sammy Watkins. If he's on the roster next season is a $21 million cap hit. He will be cut in my. I believe he will be cut after this season he unless he a, goes. He's a twenty-two. Oh no, okay. I'm he's sorry. a twenty-one, yes, 21 million, million dollar cap yes. hit if he's on the roster next year. They have to negotiate a contract extension for Tyreek Hill if they want to keep him in Kansas City. So my peripheral fear is Miko Hardman, Darwin Thompson, Kelsey. The offense is not going to work through Sammy. He may be a residual beneficiary, but. This may not have anything to do with him being a value this year. They may just – I mean, you got to use him up, use him in the red zone, best quarterback in football, best offense. I think you're, you can be 100% right, and he can still not be on the Chiefs next year, which is my concern because I don't see how you keep him. How do you keep a guy that you can drop for $7 million dead cap for $21 million to be maybe the fourth option in your offense? That's, sure. that's it, the only thing I want to bring to light for dynasty owners of Sammy Watkins. I don't think you're going to be attached – to Patrick Mahomes much longer. Yeah, I mean, dy dynasty owners, I'm, I'm fine with that argument. But for the value in your draft this weekend, he is going to be a Kansas City Chief. Cause Let, let's look at – He uh, is. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, he will He will be. He's a ninth-round pick. I'm curious, um, Mike, you heard Jason talk about Watkins. He's going around MVS. Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard. Uh, Corey Davis, I would Deshaun Jackson. I would much rather have Sammy Watkins than all those guys. I think I would too. He's just – Oh, I think, whoa. I mean, Stop the presses. What just happened? Well, I mean, you're telling me to decide between Sammy Watkins and Corey Davis. Exactly. The, Jason, wow. You did you it. You did it, man. You dropped Sammy Watkins far oh, enough. I'm going to cry. Stop it. <laughs> stop it, Andy. It's too kind. Um. There you go. So Sammy Watkins, Jason's value going in uh, the ninth round right now. Uh, Mike, you had Marvin Jones. I brought forth Lamar Jackson. My uh, last value for today's show. I've had him in here, and then last night he showed out to back me up. He's going at the back of the fourth round. It's the future AFC rushing leader, Sonny Michel. Sonny Michel... Uh, Right now, going in the late fourth is the AFC equivalent of my Chris Carson love. And I know people have issues with the knee. I don't. I watched football last night. I watched football in the playoffs when he had three consecutive 100-yard performances six did, and six touchdowns. Did you watch the games he missed because of his knee? 
in the playoffs, there were none of those. But last season, there were. Yes, there were. And, it, and every player misses games due to injury until they're active. So I believe the team trusts and believes in Sonny Michel. I saw passing game utilization last night. He was arguably the best player in preseason last night. You saw explosiveness at the second level. You saw everything that made him a top uh, first-round pick. And this team progressively leaning more and more on the running game as Tom Brady's career begins to decline or, or attempts to not decline, whatever you want to call it. Sonny Michel going at the back of the fourth round is ridiculous to me. I, I think he's a monstrous value. I, d I know that there is risk at the, at the running back position, but we talked about this uh, on the Tips and Tricks show. Over the last four years, 33% of, of the top 10 picks, which Sonny Michel isn't even close to, are injured, deal with injuries. Sonny Michel's healthy today. Sonny Michel is an incredible value to me at, at, at the 10th spot because I think no team in football is going to be more committed to the running game than New England, and I think Sonny Michel has a stranglehold on that opportunity. I loved seeing him get um, passes out of, uh, out of the backfield last night. So the upside to me is tremendous for Sonny Michel. The downside is, yeah, he could, hurt, he could hurt his knee again. He didn't look hurt last night. Well, yeah. uh, honestly, fantasy players should be uh, – happy is the wrong word. But take advantage of the knee. Like earlier on in the draft season, Sony Michel was was going in the the top of the third round, the middle of the third round. It I, was I remember him in the back of the second. And he, we didn't. I didn't want to pay that price, knowing knowing that there is the risk, even though the upside is there. But now that he has dropped, sometimes going at the beginning of the fifth or the back of the fourth, I'm with Andy. That that that's an incredible value. He, he's 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 phenomenal, and the worry for me is 100% injury and injury alone. And last year, you might be saying, "Well, one of your tips was don't buy the injury dip." But yeah, this I did want to bring that up and but, ask you how you felt about Sony. With yeah, that. Th this isn't buying the injury. He's not injured. Yeah. When I'm talking about don't buy the injury dip, I'm talking about your AJ Greens. Yeah, uh, you know the the people who are deep, who currently have a hamstring issue or something where it's like, oh, people don't want him because he's a little bit injured. Don't buy that guy. Right now, he's healthy. I don't think he's going to play 16 games. And even if he doesn't and you get him where you're getting him and he misses three games in the middle of the season or you know whatever happens, well, you're you, probably getting a huge value. Yeah, you talk about the temporary value of a Justin Jackson. Oh, my goodness, the difference between Justin Jackson and Sony Michelle. And you have to look. When I watched the playoffs last year and we watched football all season long, those three games were the – the best opportunity for me to look at that offense and say, this is what they want to do on a regular basis. That is the prescription. That is what they want their offense to be. They won a Super Bowl on the back of Sony Michelle. This is what they want. They know that the lifespan of, of, of running backs in the NFL is limited. They drafted Damian Harris to prove it. But you, and they, they went out and signed Rex Burkhead and you know, two years ago because of that, even when they had a, what looked like a stable of running backs. But things going correct for New England means Sonny Michel's uh, probably scoring double-digit touchdowns and yep. probably leading the a AFC in total carries. Yeah, I mean, if if he plays 16, that's an outlandish so, value in the fourth. And can I just give a shout-out to old man Brady? <laughs> he looked he looked the, great. The yeah, zip he did. on the he, ball was he like, did look like, he is was he getting it well. younger? I made a trade offer for Sonny Michel yesterday that I was really surprised was rejected. Let's hear it. Can I bring it forward to sure, you? Sure, please. And it includes – Mike's going to go next because it includes the player you're going to bring up. Okay. I wanted a share of Sony Michelle in a dynasty league. And so I offered Josh Gordon, Kalen Belange, and Devin Singletary, all mm. three for Sony Michelle and the injury risk last night. It was difficult for me to press the button. I looked around the office. I see some. I, I, I see Al Borland shaking his head. He was un. He couldn't believe that I sent that offer. It was rejected really? in like sixty seconds. I think I would have said no, which is fine. Which is fine. It's it, it, that's a very fair offer. Which is something you've never said to me. Yeah, I've said it before. It's just something you rarely do. <laughs> so, I just thought that that was a pretty strong offer in a dynasty league. I did. Sure. So, all right, Mike, you are going to bring up Josh Gordon. Yep, the player you tried to trade away. Oh, I think I, I think he is a value right now. I, I I didn't want to go to Patriots, but Josh Gordon is just he has to be talked about right now. Going at the beginning of the seventh, but here's what's crazy about Josh Gordon: we don't actually know what his ADP is, and 
nor does anyone else in your league. People don't know what to pay for Josh Gordon, and, and that causes him to at, to drop. Going in the seventh round right now, and he was he was actually very good for fantasy last year in spurts. Like he went to the Patriots at the end of September. It was not an easy road for Josh Gordon. Everyone is everyone. It seems like they give Amari Cooper so much grace. Well, he had grace. He had to he had to change teams halfway through. Like so did Josh Gordon, and Josh Gordon he he balled out several times for the New England Patriots, especially when Rob Gronkowski was not in. Last year, in games where Rob Gronkowski was playing, Josh Gordon was averaging about 50 yards and a quarter of a touchdown. Without Gronk, those numbers jump up to over 80 yards and half a touchdown per game. You're not like, you're not getting a wide receiver one that we, that Josh Gordon had. I mean, Andy talks about you, you feel like the range of outcomes for Sammy Watkins. That top end is not there. I'm not sure it's there for Josh Gordon anymore as well, but he is still an excellent player. Just talked about how Tom Brady looks like he's young and has some zip, at least right now. If you want a player that can make the most of the opportunities given him, you want a player with an 18-yard per catch touchdown upside of Josh Gordon. I think last night Jacoby Myers starting the game for New England, along with Philip Dorsett, is the greatest endorsement of your value pick of Josh Gordon you could possibly right. receive because if Josh Gordon is back on the field you can bet he's starting over Jacoby Myers yes and if you want to walk down the narrative street which sometimes I you like take to, a stroll I take a stroll from time to time because you gotta you gotta try and get in the heads of these of these coaches and these GMs the Patriots would have dumped Josh Gordon if they thought that it was done yes they would not have helped. They would have not dealt with this nonsense over the off season. But they said they've been more than gracious for Josh Gordon. They've they've told him your spot is here. Deal with your stuff. Your spot on this team is waiting for you when you come back. He was he is on the na uh, he's on the inactive list right now. But he's on the path to being reinstated. And last year, if you look. You got to take out the terrible game against Pittsburgh, but that's when everything, the wheels fell off for Josh Gordon. He had that terrible game, and then he was gone. But he was the wide receiver 24 in that period. And there's only upside now, like I talked about, with the splits now that Gronk is gone. Who's the biggest beneficiary now that Rob Gronkowski's not on this team? If Josh Gordon is playing, the answer is Josh Gordon. Are you interested? You're more interested in Robbie Anderson still than Josh Gordon? Yes, because they're, they're going ceiling. fairly close together right now, at least in the ADP data that I have of Josh Gordon. Just, just for just for potential ceiling, I would go with Robbie. It's in, what about D.D. Westbrook versus Josh Gordon? Because D.D.'s a little bit more of a value right now. Uh, that's a PPR decision. Sure. If it in roster construction, if I mean D.D.'s going to be safe for for floor, but Josh Gordon would Josh Gordon's ceiling is higher than D.D.'s. You, is, you brought ahead. up the the splits without Gronk, and you know it's a small sample size, but it was a universal. Every game that he played without Gronk, he was uh, anywhere from nine targets and to twelve targets. Uh, he was almost in all three of those games at a hundred yards. I mean, he was a dominant force in those games without Gronk. So there is the upside that he is a monster, and I'm glad you're bringing him up. Like I, I still think there's a ton of risk. Right, I've said it before. If he plays 16 this year, it'll be the first time since 2012, his rookie year. It is you know, I'm not banking on him for the long term. That being said, it's nice to bring up because when I've been in drafts this last week, he's a name that is so easy to forget about because you're in your online platform and you're yes, looking at your thank ADP you for bringing that order up. and you're just looking at the next five or ten wide receivers and you don't, you might not scroll like depending on how you're doing it like if you're using the ultimate draft kit app you'll have our order and you'll be safe but if you're using you know it, it side by side and you're just looking at kind of the next guys up in the queue you might forget to see josh gordon where you should be taking him so it's you good. don't want to forget to see you don't want to forget right. to see you just open your eyes look before why do you, you close, draft why do you close your eyes every time that's what i'm saying don't forget it's good luck i always close my for eyes and luck. hope i'm clicking the draft button <laughs> you just pick a random player uh, no, that's a good point. And um, if you're trying to manage where you take Josh Gordon, you can play that game of 
uh, the, the ADP buffer, if you're drafting on a platform and you see these names up above Josh Gordon and you want to see where you're going to be able to steal him, you know, people are not, they're not in on it. They're not in on Josh Gordon. Um, I have got some low ball trade offers and part of me wants to just trade him because he's great until he's off the field again. But, and there's risk in that department, but, um, Jason, this is where you normally would have talked about D.D. Westbrook. Oh, my he value is D.D. Westbrook. He can be a value and a breakout. He is both, uh, and I really love him. But I'm going to pivot to a guy that Andy has championed for the whole offseason. He was one of the first to the table saying I early on, start. you've got to not forget about Matt Breida, who is a great running back. He is actually really, really good. The only people he was behind in efficiency numbers are basically Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, and Kerryon Johnson. He's in that tier of uh, you know breakaway runs. He he actually has the most breakaway runs for 10 plus yards out of all qualifying running backs in the NFL since 2017. He knows the system, he's in the system. Jarek McKinnon has had a rough time coming back. Good news guys, he is now finally ready for individual drills. Aye. He's not I mean, Aye. look, I I was a big fan of McKinnon before the ACL injury last year. That happened, and it hasn't been smooth sailing coming back. Right now, it's Tevin Coleman and Matt Breida. And the thing is, is this is a valuable – like Kyle Shanahan's running, running backs are always valuable for fantasy. And if you look at other running back twos that are being – that are like weekly startable players with the huge upside of if the other guy goes down, you're paying a lot more for them. Latavius Murray, as the backup, is in the sixth round. James White – to Sony Michelle is in the fifth round. Tariq Cohen is in the sixth round. These are guys that they're in timeshares already. And here's Matt Burita. And here's Matt Burita at the back of your draft. He's in double digit rounds. His average draft position's deep in the tenth, and he actually has probably more opportunity than a lot of those other guys I mentioned because Tevin Coleman. I mean, if Matt Burita comes out and is the one, and Tevin Coleman's the two. I don't think anybody will be shocked. We expect Tevin Coleman to be the one and Breed to be the two. But the point is, like, there's no world where Latavius Murray comes out and he's the right. one and Alvin Kamara is the two. The, you've got a guy who's proven it in this system, and that was for a team that was struggling last year with injuries everywhere. I mean, Vegas has San Francisco. Well, and he couldn't score either. With, like, last year, the, he could not score, put up those efficiency numbers. If he had scored, I don't think the perception is the same. Yeah, is he, he going to score? Well, Maybe sh- maybe not, but if you believe the offense is better, which some do, some don't. Jimmy G looking uh, handsome, handsome face, not so handsome on the looks field. Looks only. Looks only. I knew it. Looks only. <laughs> <laughs> but it's strange because I will, I'll clump uh, Tevin Coleman as a value in there too because he's going after Sonny Michelle. He's going in the fifth round, and you start to look at the draft and say, you know, I almost always go running backs early. I just did the CBS draft the other day for the telethon. I went running back, running back, running back in a three-wide receiver league. But then you start to hypothesize. If I can go into a draft and draft two stud-wide receivers and end up with either Chris Carson and Sonny Michelle or Sonny Michelle and Tevin Coleman or Chris Carson and Tevin Coleman, any of those combinations, I feel great. Yeah, I, there, I like doing – if I'm not at the top of the draft, that's how I've been doing it. Yeah. And so it, it, yesterday on uh, the serious show, Mike, we brought up submissions for – Electric Avenue, the nickname. Yes. Um, one that I thought you should consider as well. Philip Lindsay's deserving of a little Electric Avenue oh, consideration. That's not bad. That's not bad. I think bad. Jason I feels Jason like just, he just discovered something. No, no, no. You just reminded me of something because he had the hair coming out of the back of the helmet just like Philip Lindsay looked like him, except a much larger version. You guys check out Rodney Anderson on the field. He <laughs> looks very good. Yes. He looked very big. He's, he looked very big, but oh. he was move. He could move his body Moving for a big man. Moving and shaking. I'm just saying, yeah. he's out there. If you if you have Joe Mixon, <laughs> spin that fab. I feel like those happens. moments are so strange for our listeners because they're not around you every day. It's not like you brought Rodney Anderson up on the show more than a couple times. Most people are going, "Who's Rodney Anderson?" <laughs> Rodney Anderson's a backup <laughs> running back, the third string running back for the. It could be fourth for string, the yeah. vaulted Bengals <laughs> offense. Yeah, but Jason loved, so good. loved, loved him in draft scouting time and 
college production when he wasn't injured was incredible. So to be fair to a- Anderson, he dropped because of a torn ACL and a million other injuries. <laughs> but also, yes. also fair. Yeah. Yes, I think he was the best rookie running back. Like he was my number one ahead of Josh Jacobs and everyone else, just talent wise. But he was what sixth round? Yeah, they uh, grabbed him just before the Chiefs. Oh, yeah, yeah. So hey, a couple quick reminders. First, jump over to ultimatedraftkit.com. You can kind of uh, take a look at the website, see exactly what's included, prepare yourself for Saturday, Sunday, or maybe you're drafting um, a week and a half from now. You got even more time to get into the Ultimate Draft Kit. You can do that at ultimatedraftkit.com. And we want to thank our studio sponsor, the best in the business in terms of sports memorabilia sales, pristineauction.com, a Tony Pollard signed jersey, $43 yesterday. And that is a signed... Cowboys jersey. All right. So pristine auction, always on top of the latest names. Tony Pollard getting out there doing some autographs. A lot of people go to pristine auction, and they I've seen this. You play in a keeper league or you do those rookie drafts. They buy three or four, five, six of these jerseys autographed, and these are all certified authentic of these young players at prices like this. $43 for a signed Pollard jersey. It's awesome. You're almost making a dynasty investment because if that player's value goes up, all of a sudden, you've bought something out of steel. 43 bucks for a and, jersey. Dude, talk about trade bait. Yeah. I'll give you Tony Pollard with a signed oh, Tony Pollard it's a, jersey. It's a whole different ballgame. So go to pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS. Browse their auctions. You only pay if you bid and you win. So pristine. You only pay if you win. You don't pay to bid. Com. Well, bid and win. I was saying if you bid and you win the auction. just want to make it crystal clear. You don't clear. pay to bid. There's that, some sites your, out I, there that do that crap. Not pristine. No. All right. That is it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Check us out on Twitter at the FF Ballers on YouTube. You can watch the show, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. And uh, until next time, farewell. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers oh, Podcast. Oh, my Join our hair. fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Wouldn't it be amazing if you could make your favorite restaurant sliders at home? Yes, yes. Well, problem meets solution. White Castle sliders are available at the grocery, made with 100% beef patty steamed on a bed of grilled onions. Mm. Pick up some sliders from the grocery store and make it a slider night. Okay. Go to, go to whitecastle.com slash footballers to get $1 off the purchase of any four- or six-pack White Castle sliders.